Has your curiosity ever gotten you in trouble? Maybe you took something apart, or made a mess while you were trying to find out how it worked. Or maybe you've asked a grown-up a question they didn't know how to answer. If so, don't feel bad about yourself. You have something in common with some of the smartest and most innovative people in history, including the subject of today's episode, Grace Murray Hopper. Grace was born and raised in New York City, and she was a very curious child. Her family had a large summer home, which they shared with her many cousins. Each of the seven bedrooms in the house had an alarm clock, and every evening, Grace's mother would set each alarm clock. This was the early 20th century, so these weren't the kind of alarms your parents might have on their phone, or even a digital alarm clock. These were old-fashioned clocks with gears in them and two bells on top. When the alarm rang, a small hammer would go back and forth, quickly hitting the bells and making a loud, high-pitched ring. This kind of ringing was impossible to sleep through. If you imagine what an old-fashioned fire alarm might sound like, it would be similar to that. Grace was fascinated by the alarm clocks and wanted to know how they worked, so she took one apart. But looking at the pile of gears, springs, and hands in front of her, she still wasn't sure. So she took apart another, and then another. Eventually, Grace took apart all seven alarm clocks, trying to figure out how all the tiny, complicated pieces worked together. Her mother wasn't exactly happy about all the alarm clocks in the house being broken, but she was understanding, and she let Grace keep one clock to study. Grace's father also supported Grace's curiosity. He encouraged her and her sisters to get as much education as they could so they could support themselves. This was not common for girls in the early 1900s. Grace especially loved math and geometry. She used geometry to draw pictures. This is a fun way to use math. Try to see what you can draw sometime just using the basic shapes like circles, squares, and triangles. If you look around, you'll notice these shapes, along with angles, lines, curves, and other things that can be described with numbers and many things you see every day. Grace worked hard in school and was almost able to start college when she was just 16. Why almost? Her test scores in math were very high, but her scores in Latin were too low. But just as she had done with the alarm clocks, Grace didn't quit trying after one failure. She tried again and was able to start college the next year at 17. She graduated with degrees in math and physics in 1928. She went on to get a PhD in math at Yale in 1934. Eventually, she became a math professor at Vassar College. When World War II started, Grace tried to join the Navy, which had just started accepting women. Her grandfather had been in the Navy, and she wanted to follow in his footsteps. But the Navy wouldn't take Grace. Their reasons for rejecting her were not what you'd think. They said she was valuable to the war effort as a math professor. She was too thin for her height, and she was too old at 34. This shows us another important lesson. People often don't say no to you because they don't like you. They might say no because of rules they have to follow, or because you're too important. Not a bad reason to be rejected, right? But knowing Grace, you can probably guess that this rejection didn't hold her back. She tried again. Grace took a leave of absence from her job as a professor and volunteered for the Naval Reserves. She had to get special permission due to her weight being too low, but she got to serve in the Navy and support the war effort, just like she wanted. Not only that, she was at the top of her class in the training program. The Navy sent her to Harvard University to work on the first computer made in the United States, the Mark I. Grace worked on programming the Mark I to help solve problems on the ships. Programming a computer means giving it instructions, so it will do what you want it to do. You might be wondering why Grace was given a job programming computers. But have you ever thought about why a computer is called a computer? Well, it's because their original purpose was to compute things, to do complex math that humans can't do quickly. 
The Navy used Mark I to help them track the location of enemy ships and submarines. It could perform math quickly and never made mistakes like human mathematicians sometimes do. But the Mark I did need humans to tell it exactly what math to do, and that was Grace's job. Early computers were programmed using numbers and symbols. You had to understand a lot of mathematics to program a computer, which is why many early programmers like Grace had degrees in math. Programming was complicated and it was easy to make mistakes, even for an expert. So Grace would save pieces of programs that did specific things so she could use them again in new programs. She also developed a system that allowed the computer to find those pieces of code without her having to input all of it again. After the war in 1949, Grace went to work at Eckert Mouchley Computer Corporation. Here she worked on Univac, the first computer in the United States to be sold to businesses for general purposes. This got her thinking about what people were trying to do with computers, and she realized not everyone could get their job done using only the language of math, numbers, and symbols. Grace thought there should be computer programming languages that were based on the English language. This would make it easier for more people to learn to program and use computers to help them do their jobs. But in order to create this kind of programming language, she also needed to invent the technology to translate English-based commands into the mathematical language that computers understood. And that's exactly what Grace did. She called her translator a compiler. If you want to imagine what a compiler does, think of all the word problems you've seen in your math books. You might have a problem like, Dan has seven apples. He gives three of them to Isaac. How many apples does Dan have left? The English words in this sentence give us clues about what kind of math problems we need to do. We know that the special words seven and three are numbers. We know if someone gives something away, they will have fewer of that thing. This gives us a clue that we need to subtract to find the answer. Once we think it through a bit, we can figure out that we need to write a math problem, 7 minus 3 equals, and then compute the answer. A compiler does something similar. It has a set of rules it uses to take the commands and translate them into numbers. The rules are more complicated than the subtraction word problem we just talked about, but the idea is similar. At first, the people Grace worked with thought this idea was crazy, but she kept working on her ideas for years and eventually others who worked with their computers accepted them. Grace also reached her goal of inventing the first programming language based on English words, rather than numbers and symbols. This new language became known as COBOL. It was used for decades and is even still used today. More importantly, COBOL inspired many other computer scientists to invent new programming languages based on human languages to solve different types of problems. Today there are dozens of languages and millions of people who learn and use them every day. Later Grace returned to working for the Navy. After a long career, she reached the rank of Rear Admiral. At the time, she was one of the highest ranking women in the Navy. She retired in 1986 at the age of 80, but even after retiring, she continued to work. She was always eager to help young people learn about computers and programming, and aside from inventing the compiler, she said this was one of her greatest accomplishments. Grace used to have a clock on her office wall. It was the kind of clock with hands that tick off the hours, seconds, and minutes, just like the alarm clock she took apart as a child. But this clock was unique. Its hands went around in the opposite direction from the other clocks. Instead of going clockwise, her clock went counterclockwise. Even though the clock went backwards, it still ticked off the hours and minutes and gave the right time. Grace said this clock was a reminder that you don't have to do things the same way everyone else is doing them. If you think you have a different way or better way to do something, you should try it, even if others don't understand at first. And as she showed so many times in her life, don't just try once, try over and over again until you get it. If you have a good idea and work hard to make it a reality, other people will eventually notice. 
Grace never gave up when she had a goal or a great idea, even when others around her didn't support her. She kept working on her ideas and showing her work to others until they had to listen and often had to admit she'd been right all along. She knew that good ideas didn't always fit the way people had done things in the past. They might even seem a little crazy at first, but without crazy new ideas, we wouldn't make any progress. Thanks for listening to this episode about Grace Hopper, and be sure to tune in next week for a new episode.